one day. Let's talk about potential for a second. Raise your hand if you've ever said this statement. You have so much potential. <laughs> right, everybody, right? Absolutely. You have so much potential. But the sad part is that many students are being accused of having this thing called potential, and they don't know what it is. To say, merely say, you have so much potential can be discouraging for people if they do not know what that actually means. You have potential. What does that mean? It's never broken down. They don't know whether it's a noun or verb, whether it's something they can see, touch, if it's tangible or not. Little is known about it. How does one get potential? Does everyone have it? Is it like a gift? Like some people can sing and others don't? These are questions that we need to explore. Does the A student have potential? Think about it. No one says to the A student, you have so much potential. Perhaps because they're activating their potential? These are things we need to think about and talk about. Is potential like a virus? Is it latent in everybody? You know, they say herpes. One out of every five American adults has herpes in the United States of America. They do. The herpes is a, a, a virus that attaches itself, or not attaches, it, it resides in the base of the spine. And every now and again, there's an outbreak. One out of every five. So that means if you turn to your left and count five, that person has a... <laughs> Just kidding. Oh, it's so bad. It's so bad. <laughs> pointing. They're pointing at each other. You see <laughs> She has herpes, everybody. It's such, an uncomfortable, it's such an uncomfortable topic that I always have to interject humor when talking about it. Um, but as a minister, I was privy to people coming to me and saying, bro, I'm getting ready to get married, but I have herpes, and I haven't told the, my girlfriend who will become my future wife. So I had to deal with this a lot, and I started seeing like good-looking people, you know, straight people, gay people. Everybody. I'm like, wow, there's so many folks that, but is it a virus? Is potential like a virus? Does it reside in you, and that one day it activates itself? Who knows? Does it expire? Does it ever go away? Is it like milk or bread that spoils or sours without use? These are things we really need to talk about. Is it like a life raft or an alarm that saves us in an emergency and keeps us from harm? What is potential? Before we just tell people, you have potential, what does it actually mean to them? Is it like a gift card that expires unless you activate it? They need to know. If everyone has it, will everyone fail unless they use their potential? See, potential needs to be explored, discussed, defined for it to have any use to our students. And I do say this, and I say this specifically. To say merely you have potential means nothing to a child that does not understand what it means. It needs to be defined. You know, my latest book, Eighth Grade, and some of you have received that book for free, um, talks about that. My first book is an autobiography. Here's my sales pitch. My first book is an autobiography of my life. Um, it's right outside the door. You can buy it right now for $15.95. Um, but that's, my first book is an autobiography, and I felt compelled to write that because of all the challenges and I wanted to inspire the youth. The other book that I have is, a, the, um, is it's called In Other Words. It's a constitution. It's a translation of the United States Constitution. And that's outside also for $8. But the bottom line is, with this book, what's inspiring to me is that you know the Smithsonian called me and they said, you know, we want to have your book in our Museum of American History when it reopens in DC. That's a huge accomplishment for a kid who was considered slow and pulled out of school when he was age nine. You know, after teaching and being around the education field for a while, I decided to write eighth grade. And you know what it's about? Displaced potential. It's about those boys and girls who have so much inside of them, yet they do not know how to get it out. They don't even know that it's there. And so, you know, cliches and platitudes like, you've got so much potential, really doesn't mean much. You know, I speak to my students a lot about the F word, frustration. And I tell them that, you know, in life as an adult, frustration is being at a place that you know you're smarter than. Because I felt that. Years and years go on, and I feel, I'm smarter than my boss. Wait a minute, why am I? Because I didn't activate my potential. I talk about, when I speak to you groups, I talk about my brother Alan. Alan Francis Grant, who had potential. 
but he didn't do well in school. And then he dropped out. And then he tried to get a job. And they didn't respect him. And he complained. And then he sold drugs. And then what happens when you sell drugs? You either die or you get caught. He got caught. He went to jail. Contracted HIV. Is now dead. This is the story that I share with the youth. I don't share it like that. That's a quick summary. I talk about how Alan used to be, how funny he was, how smart he was, but how he used his intelligence and his smartness for the wrong thing. This place potential is real. Some of your students may use their knowledge for different things. Potential finds a way to get itself out, doesn't it? It will find a way. Some of the user knowledge to memorize the lyrics of a rap song. Their comprehension to understand their own cultures and their background rap music even more. They use the application to apply their math skills to selling drugs. Oh, they will use analysis to analyze a neighbor neighborhood fight. They'll break it down for you, won't they? And only then she hit him and then she took off her earring and then she put some Vaseline and she put on, she said, uh-uh, no you didn't. And then she goes on and goes on and goes on and goes on. They can break it down, but yet, they can't break down the Constitutional Convention. Hmm, I wonder why. Same higher order thinking, but they displace it. They displace the potential. Oh yeah, they'll synthesize. They'll use the synthesis skills to synthesize fashion trends. And they'll use evaluation to evaluate a referee's call. The potential is there. We just have to figure out how to get it out. You know. When I taught a student with displaced potential that year, I taught, I taught eighth, ninth, and tenth grade. When I taught uh, the student with displaced potential, he tried to convince me because he was reading on the third grade level and had an IEP that there was no way that he'd be able to function a higher order of Bloom's taxonomy evaluation. He said he couldn't. But yet every Monday morning, he was able to explain why the call against one of the Ravens players was a bogus or phony call. He didn't understand that he was using one set one criterion, the rules. And then looking at the play, same thing judges do. And then making a value judgment, the rules, the play, the call, wrong. He was not able to see that he was using the highest stage of Bloom's taxonomy, and I had to help him see that. This is what I'm talking about. These are the kids, third grade reading level, but yet doesn't understand that he could do more with it. You know, as an educator, it's our mission to unveil that mystery. You know, recently I read a book called Growing Up Empty. It's part of my program at UMBC. It was about hunger in America. And a woman there used an analogy of, she said, a $50 bill. She goes, if you took a $50 bill and you crumpled it up and you threw it on the ground, and you took it out and you asked someone if they want it, they would say yes. But if you take someone's life and you crumple it up a little bit, and then afterwards, people don't see them as having value. Our children, some of them, are like that. They, yeah, they're a little crumpled. Yeah, they don't have everything going on that we want them to, but guess what? They're still as valuable as they were 